The Prince William County School Board will now uh, is open for public session. The invocation, the invocation tonight will be a moment of silence by Mr. Sean Brand. Let's take a moment of silence, please. Pledge allegiance, do we have any students in the audience? I see two. <laughs> Come this way. Can we have one of you to come? Please. One of you, not to put you on the spot, you're just gonna stand at the mic. The gentleman wearing the red, the gentleman wearing the red, white, and blue. Oh, we have a student. Oh, thank you. Stand, stand right here. Give us your name and your school. Um, I'm Lucas Murray, and I'm from Benton Middle School. Thank you. Okay. Get us started, sir. Yes, go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're moving, moving on to the public uh, meeting agenda. Madam Chair. Ms. Williams. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. I need a second. Madam Chair, I second. Is that Ms. Ms. Rawson? Discussion? Madam Chairwoman? Yes? Um, I would like to add an item to the agenda. Um, due to special circumstances arising earlier today, I move that the Prince William County School Board, pursuant to policy 140, waive the agenda setting provisions of policy 131 and place the following item on the agenda. That the Prince William County School Board approve reinstating division council to be seated at the dais in order to provide the school board with legal representation and guidance as needed during school board meetings. And I just sent a copy over to you. Madam Chairwoman, I'll second the motion. Yeah, sure. Did you delete it? I'm working on it. Sorry, touch screen. So then I, I assume you type this into the motion. Okay, Debbie, can you type this in? No, I, I think you have to do it. I'll, I'll oh, it with okay, it. sure. I, I'm, I'm okay with it. You can probably do it faster than me, but I can do it. I'll be glad to do it. I just have to say that you're... Oh, no, I'm good. Doing a good job here. We'll spell check it after. Oh, okay. There's two.
Okay, so uh, we're going to spell check this a little bit later, but what I have here is that the Prince William County School Board approved reinstating division council to be seated at the dais in order to provide the school board with legal representation guidance as needed during school board meetings. Um, I guess we're now up for discussion. I'll put in the first and second. First, I, I need to put that in. The first, it was first Miss Allison Satterwhite, second by Mr. Willie Doach. Uh, discussion. Um, my, I'm curious to, as to a, well, I mean, I understand that they were doing this because there's extra seats on the, on the dais. My understanding of who sits where is, is chairman's prerogative. Are we overruling is this design distinctly to overrule chairman's prerogative of seating? I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of looking for the motivation behind this. Madam Chairwoman, may I answer that? The, the chairman made that decision today, but he didn't consult with the school board. And yeah. as we were told in our governance training um, just in August, each school board member is one vote. And he didn't consult with any of us before he decided to move um, our division council from the dais. And so I, I think it's in our best interest that our division council, just like with the BOCS, the BOCS division council sits at the dais. On a regular basis, the BOCS members are asking for um, asking questions of division council during their meetings. And that has been the procedure with um, school board meetings in the past also. And it's in our best interest to have division council where a microphone is readily available, where division council can participate as needed in a meeting because it protects our best interests. And I believe that this is important to us and I, I don't think that that decision should have been made without our consultation. And this is the way for us to weigh in and make that decision as a board. And then my other question was, is it not chairman's prerogative to seat the dais? Is that's how we've done in the past? Or I'm just, I'm really asking because the public has no idea what we're talking about, really. I, it, so uh, for clarification for the public's interest, since we're going to p talk about this, um, it, so, for, so we're clear as a board, it is not the chairman's prerogative to sit where we, to assign the seats. And that's the reason behind all of this, basically. I don't mind if the chairman moves us around in the dais, and that's fine, but I just, I strongly feel that division council should have a place at the dais, and that's what I'm requesting. That's all I had. Anyone else for discussion? I just want to add. Mr. Judd. Yeah, sorry. Hello? <laughs> I just, if we're going to do apples to apples and say the BOCS puts the attorney up on the dais, then also the BOCS, the chairman, sets the agenda. And so I just want to make that a point. Anyone else for discussion? Question. Ms. Ross. Uh, what does our policy say? The chairman sets the dais. Because. Um, we don't have a all right, so it's open and we don't have to follow the county either. There's no, no. policy set. Thank you. It's been done in the past by previous board members, but there was no objection by the board. Mm -hmm. Ms. Williams? Yeah, because it, my understanding that chair, the lawyers only sat on the dais since 1990, and prior to that was not on the dais. That's what I was mean, elected them. Yeah. Yeah. A point. I know that we're different from the BOCS and we're also different from, it doesn't matter to me specifically because there's mics every which way, but if we're going to talk about it, I think it's only fair to represent both sides and to inform the public why we're talking about it because um, it was never an issue who sat where before. That's the only reason why I continue to talk um, because if we're going to make it public, we should be public, transparent about it. Sure. Just a point of order, this first vote we're taking is... Hold on. I, I'm making Mr. A Dodge? Yeah, this first vote we're taking is just to add it to the agenda, and then we can discuss everything later as far as pros and cons and all that. Uh, we're going to take a vote to add it to the agenda. It should be, oh, it's on now. Close online voting. Close. 
Hold on. Let's not vote yet. Okay. We got to vote first. Remove vote. We're working with this electronic. I'm I'm listening to him. What? He's, 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 he's seven. He's seven. He's seven. He's seven. He's seven. He's seven. as soon as we take care of the technical aspects.
That's really cool. Uh, may I read the addition? Yes, ma'am. Due to the special circumstances arising earlier today, I move that, this Prince, that the school board, should be the Prince William County School Board, pursuant to policy 140, waive the agenda setting provision at, of policy 131 and place the following item on the agenda. Hold on. That the Prince William County School approve, reinstate, approve and reinstate the division council to be seated at the dais in order for, to provide the school board at, with legal representation add guidance as needed during school board meetings. So this is a reading. Now, I think we're ready to take a vote of whether or not we want to put this item on the agenda. It, the open line should be available to you now. Are we making additional changes? Are we okay with this? Exactly. Move that the school board, pursuant to policy, waive the agenda setting provision and place the following item on the agenda. There you go. I mean, that's what it says. Right here. That's what it says. Yeah. 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 Are we okay with yeah. the wording? Is it okay as it it is written? No, there's no. What Debbie is saying is that the phrasing is not correct. There's no. Uh, there's no phrase in there that we are adding. It just says that it's to be placed on the following. So if you look back historically, it would not say that we're. Um, so that's the policy one that we wanted to should say amend the agenda? It should say something okay. about amending, basically. So we can remove so vote. Just to be correct. I mean, close online voting. I'm sorry. Close so online voting. Properly. Okay. It, it cancel. Can cancel, yeah. That's the thing. Close, that remove vote, just so we make sure everything's good. The motion. Okay. Uh, I've done. And then I guess we'll just change it so it says placing. Uh, may I ask what the changes are now? What are your changes? Madam Chair. Ms. Urban, what, what are the changes? Placed and amend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Miss Jesse, after it says, um, let's see, and the school board approve, re uh, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm getting to the right place. Um, after policy 131, and amend the agenda by placing the following item on the agenda. And I could be wrong, but I think this, you have to uh, go to draft for this meeting. The agenda item has to be built by me under board matters, and then I save it, and then I make the meeting active, and then it's down under board matters that you're voting on this. Then when you get down to board matters, you would have to add an, another agenda item to for the actual motion. Correct. I was talking about the language of the current meeting. Right. Is the language of the current vote adequate? That's the question I'm asking Ms. Satterwhite since you're making this. Is it adequately stated? So, so it's your after motion. policy 131, right, and amend the agenda by placing, then it goes to the following item on the agenda. So insert amend the agenda by placing. 
amend, amend the agenda? By placing. Okay. So after the word and, it would be amend the agenda by placing and get word, rid of the word place. Oh, wait, you're not typing in. Right. Amend the agenda by? Okay, so we're going to placing. start typing at the end. This will make sense after we're done. By placing? Mm -hmm. Instead of the word place. And then I think that takes care of it. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. By placing? Yes. The fault? Yes, yeah, so it would be um, waive oh, the agenda setting the ag provision of policy 131 and amend the agenda by placing the following item on okay. the agenda. And amend the agenda. By placing. Right. And then it's the language we already have. Hold on. The following item. The following item, and that's it, right? On the agenda. On the agenda. And then you can okay, get rid of that. Colon. Okay, let, let me read what we have now. We have, due to, special due to special circumstances arising earlier today, I move that the Prince William School Board, pursuant to policy 140, waive the agenda setting provision of policy 131 and amend the agenda by placing the following item on the agenda. Is, is, that, is that wording sufficient? Yes, Ms. Jesse. Okay. Is there any more discussion? Are we ready to take the vote? Discussion? We made some modification. Is there any more discussion? I'm opening it up for votes. Close. Yep. Mm. It's a it's a I, I hit save. Please designate a final resolution. Um, okay, so we need to vote on the main motion. So <sighs> passed. So we need to click down here. She needs an announcement. Yeah, go ahead. We now have to vote on the main motion. That the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. Discussion. Point of order. Was the amendment added to the agenda? I have no idea what was the vote. Right, that's... I'm sorry? We're asking what the result of the vote was. It didn't show. It's not resolved yet because there's two motions. I'm asking the technologist to explain that. You want to explain that to the? Um, oh, because it fell under the main. Yeah, well, it's not. So that's what's to... happening. Yeah. Hmm. It should still. So what? What do we need to do next, Mr. Jenkins? I don't know if it's a technology. So the vote is recorded, five yay, two nay, no abstentions, no, not present. But because there isn't a final resolution, uh, the vote hasn't shown up on the scoreboard. 
Uh, can we take a hand vote? No, it's already recorded. It's recorded. We can read the vote. Excuse me, Madam Chairwoman. Yes. It has to be put in, like I said. I have to put the meeting into draft, add this motion, the board votes on it, I put it back into, into active, the board then can vote, it ha but this motion has to be put in draft. You can't put it on the active meeting. I have to be able to go, put the meeting into draft, add this under board matters, save it, put the meeting into active, and then you can call the vote. Point of order, we've and already- And it'll be the same with when you actually vote on it. Right, we've, we've already voted twice now. Can we just know what the result of the vote was and then vote on the main motion? No, because it has to be recorded and it's not being recorded. May I ask what action you need to take, uh, Ms. Urban? I need to put the meeting into draft, add the motion under board matters, mm -hmm. save it, put the meeting into active, and then it will show up under board matters. The same will have to happen when you actually vote on putting her back on the dais. You can't add a meeting, an agenda item, as far as I know, to an active meeting. It has to be in draft. But this is just an amendment. We're not adding an item. It has to be recorded in, in the minutes. It's not being recorded right now because you, it's not popping up. It's a board docs issue, correct? No, it's the issue of way it was entered. I just need permission to put this in the meeting into draft, create the agenda item under board matters, then save it, put the meeting back into active, then you would go down to board matters and you would call for the vote. And that's the way the vote's recorded. Uh, Ms. Ehrman, I, I need to ask a question. It sounds like maybe a naive question, but who do you need permission from? You have my permission. Ms. Okay. Urban, um, do you need me to click stop meeting? She's going to put the motion. It's like it never happened. So, what are we going to uh, Please don't come over here and read this. I got, you, you should not be at the screen. It Board docs is the controlling, is the electronic agenda, and legally, you know, you're not supposed to change an agenda without a vote. So I'm, I'm assuming, that, I'm assuming because I didn't write board docs, but I'm assuming that's already built into board docs itself. So you would have to go to the back, you'd have to go back, like you were producing the agenda to begin with, enter it, and then go back. If you do a regular motion you, and you do an amendment to a regular motion, it wouldn't be the agenda itself; it would just be that motion. Uh -huh. 
I, I'm, I'm going to ask That's people. Fine. I'm going to ask people on the dais not to carry on conversations while we're trying to take care of this technical aspect of this motion. And I ask the audience indulgence. Mrs. McGowan? Mrs. McGowan would like to address the board. Members of the school board, Dr. Waltz, I would the respectfully. Mic the microphone is on. Is it on? Yes. yes. I would respectfully ask the board if you would withdraw the motion. In the interest of unity on the board, I will do my best to do my job from this remote position in the room without a microphone and without a computer, but I don't want to see any more of this dissension going on in the board. Thank you. Mrs. McGowan has asked the board to withdraw the motion.
Ms. Urban, could you update us, please? Uh, yes, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I have added the agenda item, if everyone would refresh, and it's 17.03. F1, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I hit it, I hit the wrong one. No problem. So it should be on the board matters. Which one are we voting on? You're on the right. Seventeen. Madam Chair. Yes. Before we vote, um, are we? Is Allison? Allison, are you keeping the motion or nay? I'm just looking for clarification before we make a decision whether. I respect Ms. McGowan's um, comments greatly, but I, I really don't feel like I want to withdraw the motion. I feel strongly that what has happened, and um, as I said, the extenuating circumstances today, special circumstances today, um, I feel we should go forward with the vote. Thank you. Are there other comments? I, I have a comment. I, um, it's a very emotional event here, and I think that the board should take into account the wishes of Mrs. McGowan. Um, I have discussed this with the board chair. The board chair knows my position on this. Uh, however, I don't think we make decisions for other people, and I think that we should consider the wishes of Mrs. McGowan. I also have some concerns, grave concerns really, that this was an action taken by the chair, and the chair has an emergency. He is not here. He does not have an opportunity to give his opinion or, or make some statement of his rationale, whether we agree with his rationale or not, or whether we personally agree with it. I do think he has a right to be here to discuss his point of view. And as for me, I think that we withdraw this motion, and perhaps we can revisit it at another time. But I do think that this is a great deal of time being taken up on a motion that Mrs. McGowan has asked to be withdrawn. That's, those are my comments. Mr. Douch. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I think we have heard the chairman's position quite clearly, and I think it's important that we as a board have the ability to speak as a corporate body, uh, and I think that's why it's important to uh, add this agenda item and have a vote on it. Um, Ms. Urban. Where are we in this process? On 1703, 
waive agenda provision in order to place an item on the agenda. And we need to vote on that. I need a motion. Um, again, um, I move that the Prince William County School Board, pursuant to policy 140, waive the agenda setting provision of policy 131 and amend the motion, excuse me, and amend the agenda by placing the following item on, I'm sorry, and amend by placing the following item on the agenda, that the Prince William County School Board approve reinstating division council to be seated on the dais in order to provide the school board with legal representation and guidance as needed during school board meetings. Do I have a second? Madam Chairwoman, I will second the motion again. Discussion. Madam Chair. Yes. I, I'm betwixt with this because if Ms. McGowan is no longer with us at some point and we get another attorney, are we going to sit them over there? Or do, do they get to come and sit on the dais? I didn't know anything about all of this until this evening when I finally looked at that email. So I understand. So my vote is yes for it to stay on the agenda and move this forward so that we would have it down the road if ever needed again. And I'm sure that Ms. McGowan at some point could just tell us again that she prefer not to sit up here and we'll live with that too. Discussion? Um, I also take exception with the fact that the chairperson is not present and therefore does not have the opportunity to vote on an action that he has taken Although there are those who oppose this, his action, he is not here to uh, actually vote on this action. And you have a chairperson that's not here. You have Mrs. McGowan asking us to withdraw. So I, for me, I have to take those things into account. Anyone else? The vote is four yes. Ralston, Deutsch, Satterwhite, and Brand. Three no. Wilk, Jesse, and Williams. Motion passed. Moving on to um, item 8.01, closed session. I'm mean, sorry, 7.01, approval of the consent agenda. I'm sorry. Okay, where are we? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, public meeting agenda.
Motion. Madam Chairwoman, I need to add that item to the approval of public meeting agenda, just the um, title real quick. If you wouldn't let me do that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Um, if everybody would have five, thank you. Does everyone need to refresh? Yes, please. Did everyone refresh? We are now at approval of the public meeting agenda. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chairwoman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. I need a second. Madam Chairwoman, I'll second. Mr. Brand. Ready to vote? Ms. Williams? Ms. Williams? The vote is six yes, one no, Williams, motion passed. Adoption of the, I'm sorry, adoption of the consent agenda. Madam Chair. Ms. Williams. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the uh, consent agenda, public meeting consent agenda as recommended. Just make sure I was in the right spot. Madam Chairwoman, I'll second the motion. <laughs> Williams, ready to vote. Keep our fingers crossed. Why is all that stuff up there? Why, uh, done. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> there it goes. <clears throat> Vote is seven yes. Motion passed. Moving. We're moving on to items 
13, citizens comment. It looks like we have five individuals to speak. I want to remind you that uh, you will have three minutes to speak. Uh, I will call the names. Since we only have five persons speaking, I will call all five names to come up. You have three minutes. Uh, the lights on the monitor indicate your progress. A yellow light will signify that you should sum up your position. Red indicates your time is up and you should stop. Please use proper decorum and manners while at the podium. If you do not, you will be asked to step aside. Please give your name and address for the record when you approach the podium. Dr. John Bonfadini, Christy Marie, Ryan Tasker, Alisa Hartman, and Riley O'Casey. Uh, Dr. John Bonfadini, are you the same John Bonfadini who used to work in Prince William County Public Schools? Beg your pardon? Are you the same John Bonfadini who used to work in Yes, Prince sir. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. I remember you. You do? Yes, I do. Well, I hope it was good. <laughs> <laughs> My mother would be proud if it was good. I, 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 I will chat with you later, but um, you did great work. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Also, you will have three minutes. Your time starts now. Oh, well, thank give you. Your, your name, your address, I'm sorry. My name is John Bonfadini. I'm a 78-year-old grandfather with 10 grandchildren and a retired professor emeritus at George Mason University. I began my teaching career in Pennsylvania in 1959. I was recruited to Prince William in 1966 to teach electronics at Stonewall Jackson High School now Stonewall Jackson Middle School. My first day on a job, I met a person by the name of Harry Giesler, <clears throat> and we had a discussion. He said to me the following words, we're gonna have a tough, tough time this year, a very difficult year. I asked him why. He says, we're gonna have blacks in the school. I was surprised because nobody ever mentioned that to me recruiting. It was the first time I'd ever heard of it. Well, anyway, I went on my way. I opened my electronics lab in the student teacher's lounge area, and across the hall from the lab was another teacher by the name of Sue Ellis. She was a, <clears throat> a black American teacher, American, African-American chemistry teacher, and we became friends and team taught together, and from time to time, we solved some of the diversity problems. I moved to the central office in 1960s, eight over there in the old barracks, one of the first people to be in there as a supervisor of vocational education. As a side, <clears throat> that's a far cry from where you're at here, by the way. <laughs> as a side note, <clears throat> Dr. Kelly, who this building's named for, lived down the street from me. I was re one of my new jobs was responsibilities for developing a vocational technical program at Stonewall Jackson High School, the presently one. Ironically, the building next to it his name for Suella Ellis, my friend and an African-American. Well, I'm not here to talk about the names of schools. That's beyond me at this particular point. I'm, <clears throat> I've tried to support diversity all my life. To that extent, I've written a children's book entitled, and it's here, Playing <clears throat> the Color Game with, Silly the, with Willie the Worm and Silly the Snail. The book is illustrated by my granddaughter, Brooke Bonfadini whose father and mother are both longtime teachers in his system. Brooke is presently in UVA. I'm presenting to the superintendent in each of you a signed copy of this book. Furthermore, I'm seeking permission to place a copy of this book in the elementary schools. This will be done in honor of B. Simpson's son, Kevin, whose life was tragically taken in an automatic accident. The profits from the book go to the sale of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation in honor of my granddaughter, Rachel, who is battling disease. B has generously given from her son's foundation to that cause. I thank her. 
Finally, in my last seconds here, I want to thank you, the board, for the outstanding support you had given my son Michael a number of years ago in his battle to overcome cancer. He continues to teach at Bull Run Middle School. I believe both Mike and the school system have been rewarded for your past actions, and I know my wife and I thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Christy Murray. Good evening, board members, Dr. Waltz. My name is Chrissy Falls, and my address is on file. I've probably gone through what I wanted to say 10, 15 times and changed it. And then I remember what Riley O'Casey said at the last board meeting, referenced that for what, the way I felt. I want to see better communication and more t participation in supporting each other as one community. There used to be a saying, it takes a village to raise a child. We need to have that village back. Together we need to be that village and be the influence that every child needs. Isn't that why we're all here in this room? Our kids are why we're here. There are some serious things going on in our community that affect our children, whether it be direct or indirect, and I would like to share some of those things with you. Sep September 10 through 16 is National Suicide Prevention Week. Suicide is the second leading cause of death amongst those aged 15 to 34, and the third leading cause of death amongst those aged 10 to 14. The graduating students of 2015 had five of their peers commit suicide in their high school years in Prince William County. Let's think about that. Also, the month of September is Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month. Addiction does not care about age, gender, race, religion, or economic status. In November, Dr. Levine, the state health commissioner, declared Virginia's opioid addiction crisis a public emergency and put many things in place to help this epidemic. Prince William County's medical examiner has observed a 40% increase in opioid overdose deaths over the fast, past four, five years, recording 52 overdose deaths in 2016 alone. There was a let's talk on the opioid epidemic at Forest Park last year on June 8th, which I personally invited all of you to attend. You get another chance in October during Red Ribbon Awareness Week that I'll be back to talk about as it develops. You may be thinking, why would I come to tell you these terrible things? Because it's affecting our children directly and indirectly, and together we can educate by help and help by being a community and being that village again. Lots of education will continue this year as we had last year, so pay attention, show up, and tell others. Educate yourselves so you may educate others in internet safety provided by our police department, drug education during Red Ribbon Week, which is October 23rd through 31st, as well as workshops in understanding mental health and substance abuse. Please come. I didn't have my cell phone. <laughs> but don't let the cell phones be the way our, our kids educate themselves on topics that I've mentioned this evening. Understand that substance abuse and mental health and internet safety are scary topics, topics to speak about, especially to children, but if we don't, they will find the pitfalls themselves. Please communicate more about what the school system is doing and the partnerships they maintain in the community to bring holistic services to students and their families. We all have the ability and the voices to ensure we do not have to join our children in attending a friend's funeral Let's be that the example we wish or did have growing up. Enough bickering and belittling. Let's work together for the betterment of our children. Why is something we ask after something happens? Let's not wait until then. Let's start now. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to speaking with you throughout the year. Thank you. Ryan Tasker. Good, ev good evening, board members and Dr. Waltz. My name is Ryan Tasker. I am a Prince William County student, and my address is on file. I come to you today asking that you participate in Red, Red, Ribbon, oh, Red Ribbon Week coming up October 23rd through the 31st. Red Ribbon Week is a nationally recognized drug and alcohol abuse prevention program that our schools have only touched on with morning announcements and with having us wear silly clothes throughout the week. Prince 
Prince William County Schools are partnering with the Prevention Alliance and Community Services of Prince William and their members to provide a comprehensive Red Ribbon Week initiative and to make that week full of education and resources for everyone no matter where you stand on the subject of alcohol and drug abuse. I ask that you share these events even when they don't fall in your district. Encourage your schools to participate if they aren't. Show up wearing a red ribbon or the silly clothes that are directed in that week to show your support and join us in influencing myself and my fellow students to stay clean and drug free. The theme this year is your future is key to staying drug free. Take the red ribbon week guide and follow it. Why, Why Incorporated has emailed you the resources for you to educate yourselves on this subject. Those resources are the ones that are being used to educate. Go educate yourself so that you can help educate others. Share the information and stay up to date with the county's public watch chase Oh, with the county's public. Watch Chasing the Dragon and the Hardest Hit as they are talking about our area. The two girls that lost their lives in Chasing the Dragon were students from Prince William County Schools. Work together to get the information that is being provided to spread countywide and let's make a difference. The opioid epidemic is affecting everyone. If you think it isn't, then you just have then you just don't know it yet. Take the time to educate yourself and others because the information is going to be available to you. Let's take Red Ribbon Week and show that we are coming together as a community to fight back on this epidemic and let's educate behind the awareness that's already out there before it's too late. This affects my peers and me directly and indirectly as Prince William County sits as number three in the state in the opioid epidemic. Thank you for your time and hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Is it Elisa Hartman? Um, good evening, uh, board members and Dr. Waltz. Uh, my name is Elisa Hartman. I am a Prince William County student and my address is on file. I am not standing here before you to ask for money, but rather to inform you and seek your support for Payton's project, also known as Freeze Bullying for Payton. The organization was founded after Payton Freeze. <coughs> She committed suicide after experiencing extensive bullying at Battlefield High School. Her parents, Kim and Brent Freeze, have taken this tragedy and vowed that no other family should have to experience this grief. Payton's Project, a nonprofit organization, and our Facebook group, Freeze Bullying for Payton, which currently has over 5,000 members throughout the United States. Our mission is to help my peers, like Payton, overcome bullying and to promote awareness, education, and a positive change in response to the issues surrounding bullying and cyberbullying. Since February 2016, Payton's Project has given $8,000 in scholarships to seniors in our local high schools who have either, become, have either been victims of bullying or have made efforts to promote anti-bullying programs in schools. We also we also started Payton's Peers, a support group for students who have been victims of bullying. It is a free program offered to any student. In addition, we have been the forefront in making better mental health assistance for students here in Prince William County. One thing that we did was get data for Virginia and the Department of Education to require more mental health training for all counselors in our schools. We all know that bullying extends beyond school. We are asking for your help in promoting our scholarships and also promoting our walk, which, was, which is going to be on October 15, 2017, at Harrison Pavilion, beginning at 11 in the morning and ending around 4 in the afternoon. It is our hope that with this walk, we will raise enough money to provide more scholarships, but more importantly, raise awareness about bullying in our schools and in our communities. We would be honored if you would attend this walk and perhaps be willing to be a guest speaker at our event. Also, if you haven't already done so, please join our Freeze Bullying for Payton Facebook page. This is the page that helps all individuals obtain research and strategies that they can use to cope with bullying. In addition, ways that, to be kind to each other. I also posted on this page to help all people realize that the most important thing as a community is to be kind and respectful to each other. We hope to see you, your family, and your friends on Sunday, October 15th. Together we can all make a difference to promote kindness and awareness, and myself and my peers 
if needed, can obtain stronger mental health assistance, that they become more resilient and can cope with being bullied. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Please remember to join our free our Freeze Bullying for Pain Facebook page. Um, again, please help freeze bullying for myself and my peers. Thank you. Riley O'Casey. Good evening, board members. Dr. Waltz, my name is Riley O'Casey, and my address is on file. As president of the Prince William Education Association, I would like to welcome everyone back for the new school year. It is our hope that the focus this year will remain on our students and their success. PWEA will continue to advocate for all students in Prince William County. As I looked over the legislative priorities that will be brought before this board, I noticed that many of the priorities are in sync with the Virginia Education Association's legislative agenda, including adequate funding for the, of the standards of quality and adequate funding for employee salaries. This clearly indicates we are all on the same page. I am concerned, however, that there was no mention of supporting or advocating for bills that increase funding to provide the federal recommended ratios for professional school counselors, social workers, and school psychologists. The American School Counselor Association recommends one per 250 students. The National Association of Social, social Workers recommends one to about 400 students. And the National Association for School Psychologists recommends one to five to 700 students. The current ratios in Prince William County are nowhere near what the federal level recommends. While this is just a recommendation, is it not in our best interest to advocate for the increase of employees and student services for the betterment of our students? We are out of compliance, and this is a life-threatening detriment to our students. It drastically reduces the ability to educate the whole child. If we want to address the suicide epidemic in our country, then we have to start valuing the very resources we are obligated to provide for the children most in need. We are providing minimal services as well as minimal counseling, consultation, and direct interventions to students and families. I am requesting that the division add to their legislative priorities a statement of support to increase funding to provide the federal recommended ratios for professional school counselors, social workers, and school psychologists. Board members, please support this request so all students can receive the services needed to help them in times of crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on on the agenda, we're now moving to legislative priority, Mr. Iman. This is for your information. Good evening, Vice Chairman Jesse, school board members, and Dr. Waltz. Yes, it is the time once again to formalize our legislative priorities. And tonight I will introduce our recommended positions for the 2018 legislative session. Excuse me. We'll start with the six proposed major legislative priorities. Most importantly, we continue to advocate for full funding of the standards of quality, including for support staff. Next, funding for annual teacher salary increases and the cost of competing. We are seeking new funding for class size reduction for both classroom facilities and the teachers that would be needed. We ask the state to provide options for alternative assessments. We are asking for computer coding courses to satisfy standard units of credit in world language requirements. 
and we are asking the state to remove the barriers that hinder English learners' academic success. Next, I'll introduce our statements of support and opposition. And as in the past, these statements are broken into the state's K-12 budget subject areas. While I won't read each one of the statements to you, they will be displayed on the screen and posted to our website for your and the public's information. I will spotlight a few, however. And they begin with conduct and discipline. They go to finance, purchasing, and food service. And we have several slides in this area. Take note here that we continue to advocate for bills that would eliminate the local match for the Virginia Preschool Initiative which would give us the flexibility needed to expand our preschool opportunities. They continue with instruction and standards of learning. Move on to instructional technology and specifically to our continued funding for our statewide Virginia Star computer refurbishing program. Then on to retirement and insurance. And next is school board governance. I will point out that our ongoing request for local school boards to have the option of counting recess as part of the instruction as part of the instructional day, thereby giving us the ability to increase recess time. And finally, on to standards of quality and standards of accreditation. And then in closing, following tonight's presentation, our next steps include the anticipated school board approval at our September 20 meeting. And as always, we'll then publish our final product, draft our sample bills, and share with our delegation. We also have a confirmed date for our annual legislative breakfast meeting right here at the Kelly Leadership Center on November 20 at 7.30 that morning. So add it to your calendars. And I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Iman. Uh, board members, this is up for information. Any, anyone want to make comments or ask questions? Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, I, I um, was very much interested in the comments that were made earlier about the federal recommendations for professional school counselors, social worker, and school psychologists. And this board has made great strides toward increasing those numbers in Prince William County schools. And if the board was so inclined, I would um, like to provide support in a statement um, to support the federal guidelines and recommendations under standards of quality. So if the board's inclined, you know, I'd, I'd like to do that. Anyone opposing? Okay. Anyone else? Any, any additional comments? I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Delch. If we're addressing the ratios, is there a reason to not include school nurses? We. And we wanted to look at those ratios.
We have a statement of support there was in there now, Mr. Deutsch, and let me back up the slide right here. Support and advocate for all bills that increase funding to provide school divisions with one nurse for every 750 students as per the National Association of School Nurses recommendation. Mr. Dolch, are you, any more comments? Anyone else with comments? Uh, I, I wanted to add a couple of just some comments on it. Um, when we looked at, I noticed that we always talk about the uh, class size reduction. Uh, is, would it be in, in our interest to write anything about overcrowding in this legislative agenda or, or slash overcrowding? In the language, Mrs. Jesse, um, that will go with the text version in the publication, mm -hmm. we address overcrowding in that okay. larger okay. context. Thank well, these are, these are taken as sort of a brief summary statement. Okay. Um, and a question on the preschool grant. Can you update us on our status right now with the grant and uh, the present grant that we have and when uh, that grant would end? Yeah, I was gonna s We have several types of early childhood pre-K programs. We can put something together. Uh, I'll ask Ms. Goss to have something put together for the board. Uh, Ms. Williams and I were meeting with the voice uh, group and we were very interested in this whole pre-K initiative. Uh, and uh, we need to, I'd like to discuss later ways that we can consider providing preschool care. I know we talked, Dr. Walton and I talked about facilities, um, but at some point, if this grant is not available to us, we need to look at other ways of funding preschool. And I think that's a discussion that we need to have, perhaps not tonight, but down the road. And finally, I wanted to say that I was in a school division earlier this summer that had the A through F rating. And I cannot tell you how demoralizing it was for that particular school that I was working in because they were rated as a C. And uh, for teachers, I think to have a great rating for your school, and to be honest with you, many in that school did not understand how they became a C. Uh, I think they were a B one year and they dropped to a C. And when they looked at their scores, they didn't think the scores were that different. So I am really pleased to see this A through F uh, item on the, on our, as a legislative agenda for our, for our school division. And those are all of my comments. Anyone else? Ms. Rawson, Mrs. Rawson. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, when you brought up early childhood education, my next door neighbor was running around trying to find a place for her soon to be four year old. Um, we don't have very much in my area. And because the money is attached to it, so they may make, you know, a couple of dollars more than allows them in. Is there any waiver on that, on the financial, on the money part where you can have too much money and you're getting up every day going to work? Dr. Waltz, I think we'd have to... I didn't think so. Yeah, probably get more uh, more information from you, Ms. Ralston, to be able to answer that question. Okay, because I'd like for that little girl to be able to go. She um, quite she's quite smart, and I think that being in school would, would do a lot more for her. And so she's a potential, you know, good graduate from our school system. Oh, good. Uh, one question. I think we were, uh, there, there were adjust adjustments made to our ability to build more schools as a result of some of the proffer legislation that passed. Is there any thought on 
having some kind of general statement of support or opposition as things might change, and I think some of that legislation was a little surprising as it passed and moved so quickly. We had thought about that area, but the best information we have, and if Mr. Klein has something different uh, from working with our lobbyist, Mr. Council, was that we didn't see that as an opportunity going forward, but you as well, Dave, thank you. That it doesn't mean we couldn't put a statement in, we just didn't see that there was an opportunity that it would have an impact. Fair, I, I think a lot of us maybe in Northern Virginia were a little blindsided by the legislation yes. that happened. And if there is some kind of I don't know, placeholder statement, just that if something were to arise to give an opportunity to make things more advantageous for us or oppose something that might be problematic, we could uh, take advantage of that. Well, I'll, I'll leave that to the pleasure of the board. Sure. Sorry, any more comments? Thank you, Mr. Iman. Thank you. Madam Vice Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Waltz. Our item this evening is to re receive information with action being at the next meeting in regards to the sale of Virginia Public School Authority bonds to support uh, totaling $126,540,000. This supports school projects that have been approved within our capital improvements program. And just for more for public information, each year we go through a process of updating what our needs are in the capital improvements program, identifying those buildings and structures that we need to build, put additions on, do renovations, and then identify funding sources in order to support that CIP program as it's known. Uh, the two primary sources for that are cash that's approved in the budget process or going out and essentially selling bonds to support that construction. Effectively, that means we're getting a loan, uh, selling the bonds, uh, we use that to construct new facilities, and in turn, as a division, we have a debt service or we have to pay the mortgage to go along with it. In support of that capital improvements program at this point for going into the next, well, for this fall, uh, we would have a, uh, a planned sale again with VPSA of $126,540,000. This supports a number of projects that we have within the capital improvements program. And I'll just briefly touch on, there's a listing that's available to the board. Again, it's not something that's, that we have on the screen, including uh, uh, partial funding for Lake Ridge Middle School, partial funding on our new alternative education school, uh, part of the funding for the Patty Elementary School addition, additions at Antietam, Lake Ridge, and Springwoods, our Prince William Parkway Elementary School uh, construction, addition and renewal at Lee Sylvania Elementary, addition at Miniville Elementary, in addition at Stonewall Middle School, Western Bus Facility, renewal for Marshall and Montclair Elementary School, and the first uh, uh, bond sale associated with the 13th High School. So all of these projects would be at, in some phase either starting or continuing through their construction process. The other item I, that, that's within the information we wanna make sure certainly that's available, we had planned in the capital improvements program to move forward on the uh, Eastern Middle School in the Potomac Shores area. That is land that was proffered by the developer and we've been working with them the last couple of years to look at having that site available to meet this timeline. Uh, over the course of the last couple of months, the developer, while they've been trying to meet that schedule, uh, is not in a position where they will have that site ready. They have to develop, prepare the site for us, that they will have it ready to meet the timeline for this bond sale. So from that perspective, this funding for that's not included in this. We will, in our capital improvements program this fall, update that process, uh, review where we are in it, and uh, update the, the timing of that school, uh, that middle school, because we, we still consider that to be a significant and, and critical item in our, our capital improvements program. Thank you.
This is on for information. Uh, discussion, anyone? You're free to go. <laughs> He's gone. Okay. Uh, we're moving on to superintendent's time. Dr. Waltz. Thank you, Vice Chairman Jesse. I have two reports tonight. This is our yearly back to school report night. Uh, the 10 top reasons to be excited about the new school year in addition to my regular updates. So I'll start with the updates. First of all, I'd like to congratulate everyone across the school division on the outstanding opening of the new school year. The Covington Harper Elementary School opened and received a lot of great media coverage. And at every school I visited so far, students and staff were very excited and they were very engaged in their learning. As the year begins, I am pleased to announce some of our more recent accomplishments, and there are many. Our students did very well on the most recent standards of learning tests for Virginia. Pass rates soared in history assessments. Students met or exceeded the average pass rates of counterparts across the Commonwealth in all five areas covered by the 1617 exams. There were big successes at schools that devoted extra attention to subjects where students needed extra help. The Virginia School Boards Association honored our school division with the top award in the annual Food for Thought competition. The Office of School Food and Nutrition Services won the award for its contest entry, a video on the self-serve garden and fruit bars we offer in all elementary schools. And several of our board members uh, were present for the presentation of the award, and uh, Chairman Jesse offers, uh, uh, Vice Chairman Jesse uh, accepted the award on behalf of our school board and our school division. The Virginia Department of Education honored a total of 20 schools for advanced learning and achievement in the annual Virginia Index of Performance Awards Program. Honored schools exceed minimum state and federal accountability standards and achieve excellent goals established by the governor, excellence goals established by the governor and the State Board of Education. The current awards are based on achievement and performance during the 15-16 school year, and our website has all the details of those schools. Back in March, we successfully underwent our external review with Advanced Ed and was recommended for a five-year renewal of our accreditation status. And we received the award uh, and the uh, status of accreditation today. And here it is. Huge. So that's the beautifully framed certificate of accreditation, which will be displayed out here in the lobby of the Kelly Leadership Center. Accreditation with advanced ed is a voluntary process and allows for schools and school divisions to be benchmarked against others both nationally and internationally. It is a great honor for us to once again be recognized by advanced ed for our educational quality. Congratulations to Jack DeMoulin, senior at Forest Park High School, who won the Microsoft Excel World Championship, which included a $7,000 award. Associates, yeah, let's clap for that. Associate Superintendent for Finance and Support Services, Dave Klein, received the Distinguished Eagle Award from the Association of School Business Officials International. The award recognizes Mr. Klein as a visionary K-12 leader who maximizes resources so teachers can teach and students can learn. He has successfully guided our school division's finances through the Great Recession using resourcefulness, flexibility, and innovative thinking. You can clap for, you, you're the school board. <laughs> You can clap for anything. <laughs> Even Dave. Really <laughs> for the 22nd consecutive year, 
Prince William County Public Schools has received the Meritorious Budget Award from the Association of School Business Officials International. The award recognizes Kathleen Addison, Supervisor of Budget, and her staff for their work on the school division's 2018 budget. Our school division was recognized recently in a post titled Education Superhighway. The article focuses on the research conducted by our Office of in Information Technology Services to maximize our position in negotiating a greater bandwidth speed with service providers. Congratulations to Director A.J. Phillips and her staff. I'm pleased to announce that several schools are recipients of the 21st Century Community Learning Centers grant. Fred Lynn and Hampton Middle Schools received grants of $180,000, and Garfield High School received a grant of more than $172,000 for the first year of the three-year grants. And in addition, Kilby Elementary is beginning its third year of the current grant. The grants offer after-school academic enrichment programs at each of the sites. So the results are in a random sample of Osborne Park High School students participated for the first time in the school division's history in the Program for International Student Assessment, or better known as PISA, which is given to 15-year-old students across the globe. Osborne Park students outperform schools in the United States in science, reading, and mathematics literacy categories and outperformed every other country in science literacy. Osborne Park students, uh, there's more. <laughs> Osborne Park students outperform students from 68 other countries that were not measurably different but statistically equal to four countries Chinese Taipei, Estonia, Japan, and Singapore. In reading literacy, Osborne Park again showed well against the rest of the world, outperforming 67 countries and essentially tying Singapore. And in mathematics literacy, Osborne Park outperformed 31 countries and was comparable to another 31 countries. Only Hong Kong, Macau, and Singapore performed better. Congratulations to the staff and students at Osborne Park High School for their outstanding performance. This only verifies what we already knew, that Prince William County Schools can successfully compete academically on the world stage. And I really wanna thank that staff for piloting. They're the first high school that has administered the PISA test in Prince William. For the third year, we published a combined elementary and middle school guide and calendar. The calendar includes the weekly menu for elementary and middle schools as a separate pullout page. Throughout the calendar, we included artwork by our students. The cover of the guide was created by Daria uh, Cott, who is a freshman at Battlefield High School this year. And in closing, I will share with the school board and the community the annual top 10 reasons to be excited about the new school year. So here we go. We <clears throat> Pardon me? We missed the clap for Osborne Park. Let's all clap for Osborne Park. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't love this. Exactly. <laughs> you can clap for this when I'm done. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number 10. Here we go. Our support staff cleaned and prepared 10 million 995,000 square feet of building space in preparation for this school year. Number nine, new schools on budget and within budget. Covington Harper Elementary Independence Non-Traditional School is being built currently and we're all moved in also to Kilby Elementary School, which is a replacement school. Number eight, school additions on schedule. Every one of them opened on time and within budget. Number seven, technology support. Our schools are on INET with internet uh, wireless access. Over the last year, more than 18,000 new computers were installed. Over 58,000 computers are now on our network. Almost 1,000 interactive whiteboards were installed and almost 93% of every classroom in Prince William County now has access. Continuing, Prince William Future Ready Digital Transformation to Integrate Technology into the Classroom Instruction is continuing and coming this year uh, through the board's uh, great budget decision, our bandwidth is going to be upgraded from 2 gigabytes to 10. 
That will be completed, actually, in just a few months. Number six, student learning. More than 11,200 students attended our summer school for remediation enrichment and extended school year and high school academic programs. Number five, prepared staff. More than 12,600 participants attended more than 1,000 professional development courses over the past summer in preparation for our new school year. Number four, best and brightest. We have more than 11,000 employees. We welcome nearly 800 new teachers to our ranks to open our classrooms. Almost 70,000 job applications were received this past year to work in Prince William County, including more than 30,000 certified teaching applications. Number three, support services. On the first day of school, we served over 8,000 breakfasts and almost 48,000 lunches. 814 buses were on the road and traveled over 56,000 miles, safely delivering 61,000 plus students to and from school opening day. Number two, now last year somebody pointed out the fact that we really have more than 10 because number two always has more than one sentence. But I think it's important. So here we go, celebrating success. All 11 high schools are in the top 10% of schools performing nationwide with the Washington Post Challenge. Patriot was a gold medal and silver medal schools, Osborne Park, Battlefield, and Woodbridge were recognized for being among the best from more than 22,000 high schools uh, in the study nationwide. 23 of our schools are included in the most recent Northern Virginia Magazine's list of top schools in the DC metro area, and 12 of our schools are in the top 25%. Number two, celebrating success, continued. In 2016 uh, and 17, 34% of high school students, that's 9 through 12th graders, were enrolled in at least one advanced or weighted course. The percent of our students earning AP, IB, or Cambridge qualifying scores continues to far exceed the national average. Our latest on-time graduation rate continues to improve to 91.7%, and over the last decade has risen every single year. Number two, celebrating success, continued. Accreditation pass rates increasing at the majority of our schools. $56,741,193 is the amount of scholarship money our students earned in the 2017 graduating class, and that's an increase of over $18 million from the previous year. During the last five years, our students have earned $208,033,028 in scholarships. 27% of students in our schools were English learners, and increasing numbers of English learners were identified for gifted services, twice as many as the previous year. That's a 100% increase. And number one, and finally, our students. We welcome nearly 90,000 students to the new school year, and that's approximately 1,000 additional students. We continue to be the second largest school division in Virginia, and our nation has about 16,000 school divisions, and we are the 34th largest in the United States. Finally, my sincere thanks to everyone. It takes, obviously, a team to be successful, and our teachers, support staff, our administrators, our school board making critical decisions, civic groups, community business partners, elected officials, our parents, guardians, and students have come together to continue to work to build a world-class school division right here in Prince William County. So thanks to the board, thanks to everyone, and welcome back. The end. Ta-da! Ta <laughs> Uh, thank you, Dr. Walsh. We're moving on to item board matters. Uh, revision of policy 403.09. Mr. Klein, you're back. Yes, ma'am. You may not get away this time. <laughs> I wouldn't come back for a second. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Klein. <laughs> Vice Chairman Jesse, members of the board, Dr. Walsh. I will hope to make this brief. Uh, what, what uh, Before you, we have an update to policy and some of the associated regulations. Uh, 
This is, provides an update to policy 403.09, which primarily adjusts the language relative to the policy itself, condenses it to make it in a, a more readable and understandable form. It does not significantly change the, the requirements. And I think most significantly, we've also added the legal, re the legal references, both at a federal and state level, that provide the basis supporting uh, the need for the policy and the requirements that we are uh, obliged to comply with. And this would be for first reading, and we would bring it back to the following meeting uh, for your approval. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Comments? Madam Chairwoman. <laughs> Mr. Dovich. I just wanted to thank you for your thoroughness in working through these and uh, bringing them up to speed. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Rawson. Mrs. Rawson. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you for all of last year. <laughs> <laughs> I called you every time I thought about money. If I thought about money, I dialed you up. So I just want to say thank you, and I'm so glad that my school at Miniville is online and will be completed soon. Thank you very okay. much. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Mr. Kleins, I, th I think it was, and I don't have my notes in front of me, this was where you had the climbing walls? Th there are regulations associated with the climbing walls that are a part of uh, this. I, I was very pleased to see that you had guidelines for the climbing walls <laughs> because they're beautiful uh, items in a school, but it is very challenging, and every time I saw a child climbing up on one, I thought this, this is going to be the day. But I also want to thank you for the year. I, I know you just loved me coming up here. I didn't call you. I just called you out in public. But I, I thank you for returning. <laughs> thank you. It's good to be black, isn't it? Be, to be back, isn't it? We're here. I'm sorry, Dr. Waltz is being bad. He's distracted me. Um, Ms. Goss. So good evening, Vice Chairman Jesse, school board members, and Dr. Waltz. Tonight we are proposing some updated changes to policy 261 and 261.01. The most significant change um, is the addition of language noting that the calendar will be adopted as far in advance as possible, and also that makeup days uh, will be a part of the calendar to ensure that we um, have those days identified in case instructional time is needed to be made up. Uh, I think it's also important to note that on October 4th, at that meeting, we'll be bringing forward uh, the options for the 2018-19 school calendar, both a pre-Labor Day and after Labor Day. Um, those will come forward on October 4th. Mr. Brand. Ms. Goss, thanks, thank you for the information. I do want to point out, I, I do like the additions to Regulation 261.03-1. Uh, the additional clarity at the end of that one about the, the, the instructional day and the approved school calendar hours above the 990 with all the many, many, many questions and concerns we had last year with our very mild winter and the result of that. Thank you for adding that clarity to that regulation. Absolutely. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Ms. I just have one comment. I'm not sure if it falls under this, but it falls under school calendar. And um, I know it falls under your purview and, and Dr. Welts for the uh, change to the rules for absences for religious holidays. Um, I don't think we, we may have talked about it last year, but I just wanted to bring it up again this year because I think that's an important distinction that um, we've been trying very feverishly as a system to um, communicate that message to our, our pop, our, <clears throat> 
population. And I think that that is a very important step forward in recognizing others in the diversity that we um, made a pledge to do so. So I just wanted to thank you and Dr. Waltz for that addition um, and for allowing those students to be able to take their religious observances without it counting against them. I was never a perfect attendance student, but I know that there are some out there and that would really, really grind me if I had to miss school for a holiday that wasn't a, a major uh, holiday according to the U.S. calendar, and, and so now that they have the same opportunity as everyone else, and I think that that's wonderful, so I wanted to thank you both for that. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Goss. Moving, moving on to board matters. I think I'll start on the left, and we'll work our way down. Ms. Satterwhite. Thank Point you, of Justin. order, uh, we need to deal with item 17.03. Oh, I did skip that. Where is it? You, re you refreshed it. Uh, let's refresh it again. Okay, we have to re ref I'm sorry, we have to refresh it again. What happened? It's not on there. <coughs> Thank you. It's 11 or Eleven one. Too far. Okay, we have to go back. Okay, we're back to eleven on one. Uh, waive agenda provisions in order to place an item on the agenda. It was recorded. Madam Chairwoman. So what do we do here? Madam Chairwoman, may I make a motion? I move that the Prince William County School Board approve reinstating division council to be seated on the dais in order to provide the school board with legal representation and guidance as needed during school board meetings. And Madam Chairwoman, I'll second the motion. Uh, hold on, we have a technical consideration here. It's already, it's already. We're just pausing to put the actual motion on the agenda. Okay. And wait for <laughs> And we'll probably refresh after this. Okay. Now I'm getting it. What a mess.
We need a motion. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, that the Prince William County School Board approve reinstating Division Council to be seated on the dais in order to provide the school board with legal representation and guidance as needed during school board meetings. Madam Chairwoman, I will second the motion. Okay. Okay, hold on. That's Ms. Satterwhite. Mr. Dodge. Okay. Discussion? Yes, Ms. Thank Sadaway. You. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, today, as I stated earlier, um, due to special circumstances, um, we received, the school board received many, many emails, and um, several of those originated from the chairman. Some were confidential and some were, some were not. And um, as a result of those emails, I feel it's important that we do this. And I just, I think it's important that as a school board and also in light of the governance training that we've had many times over and just recently in August, that this school board, each of us as board members, we have the authority of one vote. And that vote only has power when we act as a body corporate. Um, I believe it's my opinion that when the chairman decided to move division council from the dais that he was not he was acting on his own authority and not with the authority of the school board and i believe it's detrimental to the school board to not have division division council sitting here in the dais with access to board docs in front of her and be able to participate in the meeting as needed so if we have if we are in need of legal advice with board docs in front of the division council, division council can track what's happening and, and actually be able to comment as we ask. But seated to the side, it's a little bit more difficult. And it's not up to me. I mean, I don't mind if, if the chairman decides where along the dais division council is going to sit. I'm fine with that. But it's, it's firmly my opinion that if somebody is going to be removed from this dais, that it needs to be an action of the school board, not one member. Just like anything else that gets directed shouldn't be one member of this board, it should be this board acting as one body. Whatever the vote is, it should be this board acting as one body. And so that's why I wanted to add this item to the agenda tonight. I feel like it's important that we handle this right now and take care of it now. I do understand that the chairman was not able to be here, that something came up, but he was, he was emailing us as late as, um, I believe, 4 o'clock or just after 4 o'clock this afternoon. Um, it's regretful that he's not here. This is going to be handled one way or another, whether he was here or not. And I feel it's important that we take care of this. And so I, I believe very firmly, as I believe Mr. Deutsch said earlier, I think the chairman has made his opinions very well known to the school board, both confidentially and in um, not privileged emails. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Chairwoman. Anyone else? Mr. Deutsch. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I actually have two questions for Division Council um, since she spoke earlier. Mr. Deutsch. Thank you. Um, and I want to thank you for your offering earlier at a time when we were trying to work through processes um, to have the motion withdrawn. Um, but I had two questions for you. Uh, do you believe that you can better um, exercise your abilities as division council seated on the dais or uh, seated where you are currently for most of this meeting? I, I don't think there's any question but that I can be more effective on the dais. While there are questions from the board for legal advice which in my judgment need to be answered in closed session, there are also many occasions with this board, with previous boards, on Mr. F Mr. Fagan's watch, where the board asks for other guidance that can be given in open session, particularly as it pertains to the regulation of the operation of the meeting. Let me clarify that the reason I ask that the motion be withdrawn was not because I don't believe that I could be most effective sitting with the board. I, I asked because I'm disturbed to see this issue sidetracking the board from your real business. And I'd hoped it could be resolved. Um, but I do appreciate and I do agree with Ms. Satterwhite that I am most effective sitting with the board. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyone else? 
Ms. Williams. Thank you. Um, I just think that this is one one of those instances, if we're doing this as a corporate body for the board and the chairman is not present and this was his um, decision to be made, I think that um, on record that it should be noted that he is absent and that we are deciding as a corporate body um, without him present, which I think is one of the issues that this board has, is that we do not do things together. And I think that this will continue um, to bring about the divisiveness because it's it's almost like a tit for tat issue in the sense that it was done without us and now we're doing it without him, which makes us no better than that decision, in my opinion. And I just wanted to make sure that we're clear on that. Um, from my perspective, where Mary sits is you know, up to Mary's discretion or the board's discretion. I have no one way or the other. I think that she is a very effective at her position. And I think that whether she's sitting down on the front or up on the dais, she's going to be as equally effective because she's good at her job. <clears throat> but I think that the board has once again allowed a decision made unilaterally to take uh, precedence over us being actually able to conduct regular business. And I would hope that this would be the last time that we encounter this as a board and we are able to um, conduct ourselves in a, in a much more professional manner moving forward. Uh, before we have it's Mr. Dutch. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, Any, anyone else before Mr. Dutch? Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think there were, um, I, I, there, there's an important concept here, and that is acting as a body corporate. And definitionally, that's any time there is a quorum um, of the board and we vote as such. Um, and I think when uh, we listed off the different ways that the seating could be arranged, um, whether it's with um, you know the choice or uh, input of division council or of the board, uh, what was ignored was what actually happened, which was the unilateral action of the chairman. And I think it's critical for the board moving forward to act as a board together. And when we have structures that force us to work together, uh, then we will actually be able to move forward and respect those differences. Uh, when we have individuals acting unilaterally, um, that's not going to work very well. And that's why I think it's, it's important one way or another to make these decisions as a board and have votes. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I would like to make a couple of comments. Um, first and foremost, I think that um, I do not like the idea of voting without him being present to explain his position. As for me, uh, there are people on this board who think that I am influenced by the chair, that I can't make a decision without uh, his influence, and most people who know me that and know me not for a long period of time, but for a short period of time, know that I make my own decisions. I. Sometimes I agree with the chair and sometimes I do not agree with the chair. Uh, he and I have had this discussion about the placement of Ms. McGowan uh, on, the, on the dais and I've told him my position and my position was that she should be on the dais and that as we look at, he, as he was looking at the new student coming aboard that we maybe needed to discuss that and look at other arrangements. So my vote is um, I have mixed feelings because I, I do agree with Ms. Williams that um, to say we want to do a corporate and we are all one, I, I think we're, we're living in a fantasy world. We're not, and we are divided. We're the best show in town. I think people are missing scandal to see us. And I think we need to change that. We are divided in many respects, but what I'm not divided on is whether or not I think I'm doing the right thing. And the right thing for me is to not remove her from the dais. And I will say to you, some of you have different opinions about um, Th 
Thank you. Some of us have different opinions about Mr. Sawyers, but you know, one of the things I said to him was that you and I have to agree to disagree. Uh, so this vote is not for, I do think that he should have been present, but this vote is for um, Mrs. McGowan, and he knows my, my view on it, and so therefore I will be voting for her to be on the dice. Now, as we look down the road, and we will need to find a place for the student representative on the board, that has not taken place yet, so I think it's a little bit premature to make a decision about how that's going to work. But I think uh, for all of us, this is not about the chair. This is about Mrs. McGowan. And Mrs. McGowan, to me, has done a, a good job for us. She came in in the middle of something. The back and forth on the emails, to be honest with you, I don't really want to be involved in it, but I really think that I have to do what I think is the right thing for her. She does not, in, all of us are moved. And we come in in January, we know we're going to be moved. But this is September, is it September? Am I right? It's September. Yes, I'm doing well. It's September. And we, as board members, I think if we learn, like today, that we were going to be moved to a seat over here, some discussion should have taken place prior. And I think that, for me, it's just the right thing to do. So thank you. OK. Madam Chair, point of order. Allison made the vote. The motion, excuse me. The vote is five yes, one no. Mr. Wilk, one abstain. Mrs. Williams, motion passed. Board matters. Okay, I've got to close this out. That's, you're done, so I'll just go right down. Okay. Okay. Board matters. We'll start with... Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. I just want to welcome everybody back to the school year. It's been exciting to attend back to school nights already. Um, for the first time, Battlefield High School and Pace West didn't have back to school night on the same night, so I was able to attend Pace West, and that was fabulous to be able to attend. And um, 
you know, the other strange thing is this is my first school year since 2004 when we moved back to the area that I'm not a Prince William County School parent. I'm now alumni. And so it's a strange position that I'm moving into this year. But I just want to tell my constituents, I want to hear from you. Please come up and say hi to me as I'm at back to school nights. I am excited to serve you and looking forward to a great 2017-2018 school year. Welcome back. Mr. Brandt? Yes. Mr. Brandt? Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Uh, first of all, I'm going to copy Ms. Ms. Satter right there. I want to welcome everyone back for the 2017-2018 school year, and I hope it's been a great start, and I look forward to seeing what we all can accomplish in the new year. I do get asked a lot, when is Gil coming back? That's a very popular question these days. Um, so I have a little update on Mr. Trinum. Um, he starts to return home later this month. He's going to have to make some stopovers at a few places overseas and here in the States. Uh, for out processing from his, his Naval Reserve duty. He does plan to be back up here by the second meeting in October, so I guess he'll get to vote on the school calendar for next year. And uh, I know personally, as a resident of the Brentsville District, I know I'm also looking forward to our most experienced uh, member of this board returning to his elected position. So come on back, Gil. We'll welcome you. Um, it was great to visit uh, Brentsville District High School last week for their back to school night. I do look forward to visiting with staff and families at Stonewall Jackson and Patriot High Schools tomorrow night at their back to school nights. I plan to start at Stonewall, and then I'm going to head over to Patriots about halfway through the evening. So I look forward to seeing Dr. Nichols, Dr. Bishop, their staff, and their respective Raider and Pioneer families. Uh, in addition, another thing coming up is the next joint CIP process team meeting. That's going to occur on Saturday, September 16th, right here at the Kelly Leadership Center. I, I can't recall what room, but we, I'm sure we'll post it at some point. Uh, I do think it's actually my turn to chair a meeting. So I, you know, I'm very punctual, so we'll start right promptly at 7.30 a.m., we're going to end no later than 9 a.m., so um, my kids have a couple soccer matches that morning, so I want to be there and not be late, so, so starting on time and end of time is a big thing to me. Um, so this is also our first meeting since, uh, since June after taking off in July and August. Uh, on Monday, September 11th, we will remember the most terrific day in American history, at least in my lifetime. Uh, on that day, I was a third-year language arts teacher at Woodbridge Senior High School, and it was, it was during my planning period when I first read online uh, what was happening in Lower Manhattan that morning. I recall clicking on an article on the New York Times website shortly after the second tower was hit. Um, the ray enemy gets all choked up, so those genes. I will never forget the faces of my English 11 students during my next class. Some of them had parents who worked nearby at the Pentagon, Pentagon or close by, and I could see the fear in their eyes. I had no idea what to say or do. I will also never forget September 12th. On that day, it didn't matter where you grew up, it didn't matter the color of your skin, it didn't matter whether you were rich, poor, or middle class, it didn't matter if you lived in one part of a county or another. The only thing that matters is we were Americans united together. It doesn't feel like September 12th today in America, but we've seen recent examples of what's possible when we unite instead of divide. For example, after the recent devastation of Hurricane Harvey, and what we'll probably see in this country later this week after Hurricane Irma comes ashore, we can do great things in this country and great things in this county if we lend a hand instead of throwing daggers. I look forward to our next uh, board meeting on September 20th. I've been a little greedy on the 20th with agenda requests. Uh, perhaps it's my short timer's per prerogative to, to be a little greedy. Um, I have asked uh, the eighth grade girls chorus from uh, Gainesville Middle School to come do us some musical selections. And we always seem to be happy when music starts us off. So, so maybe that will kind of set the tone for the evening. Um, and also I, I asked the, uh, the Knoxville School to come do a best practices presentation. So I look forward to that. And I want to th say thank you to uh, Dr. John Bonfadini for the uh, children's book that you gave us tonight. I uh, do appreciate that, and I thank you for your poignant words as well. And nephew, uh, I have notes written all over the page here. Uh, thank you to the students who came to talk to us tonight about Red Women Week and also Freeze uh, Bullying for Peyton. Uh, that is all. Thank you. Ms. Rawson. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, welcome back, and I'm sure you've heard it several times. I have managed to almost complete every one of my elementary and my high school, which has been completed, and the two middle schools. The good thing about it is I looked at the teachers and the principals going in saying, hello, what can I do to help you? And some of them had great ideas of things that they would like to do this coming school year, so I'm going to send them the principals to 
one of the area superint associate superintendents uh, because they do have some great ideas out here. And we just sometimes have to let people go and see where they take us. So it's always a good ride sometimes. Um, I'm pleased to be here because it just seems like it goes so fast. The school year comes and then the school year is over with. Um, I hope that the superintendent had a great summer because he's gonna be a busy, busy little bee. And he's gonna keep that up till no telling when he will stop. His daughter is coming into high school, has come through the doors, and so you know he's gonna be busy for those of you who are parents and um, you have to watch your brand new high school uh, student show up. So good luck to you. <laughs> this job will look real easy after being a high school dad. Um, so I thank you very much, but let me also just make this one other announcement. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Washington, um, we have three right here in Prince William County. We have the one in Dell City, uh, we have one in uh, Dumfries, and the other one is in Manassas. Uh, we can have a great partnership, because I did say to them that I, we have somewhat of a partnership, but it's not big. And we need to be able to bring kids in. Uh, and I'm really pleased to be able to sit on that board and do something that seems like fun to me. Um, so I thank you very much. I look forward to a great new year. Um, it should be a real doozy. Take care. <laughs> Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> like my fellow board members, I'd like to welcome everyone back to uh, the 2017-18 school year. Excuse me, I'm a little under the weather. Um, I have done one back to school night and it, Biasly, it was actually for my own child. I um, haven't had my school back to school nights yet, and the first one is tomorrow. So I'm going to, um, in advance, apologize to Freedom, parents and student body. I would love to be there, but it is also the same night as our governor's school uh, board meeting, the first one of the year. So unfortunately, I will be there. If anyone's not going to Freedom and you'd like to go to the uh, governor's school board meeting, we will be having it at the Manassas campus of George Mason University starting at seven o'clock tomorrow. Like Mr. Braun, I am chair, it will be prompt. So <laughs> we usually get in and out, but um, I would love to um, have more uh, of the public join us at those meetings so they can find out uh, about the amazing and completely awesome and mind blowing, I must say that is an appropriate term, uh, of activities that our students do at the Governor's School. They are amazing. I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Bonadera for this lovely book. I love reading and I love books and um, my little one and I will go home and read this tonight because I'm sure he'll still be out waiting for mom. He's a night owl. Um, I would also like to um, just thank all of our school staff, especially um, our janitorial staff and our bus drivers, all of the uh, people who we don't see often who do such amazing work. Um, as our superintendent noted earlier, um, they are the ones that get, keep us up and running and is very much appreciated uh, by myself and by our population. Um, and I would also like to remind parents because this is the time of year we hear all kinds of things like I can't log in and I can't get the website and I don't know how and I'm so frustrated and ah! So what I had not heard a lot this year and I think our communications department is doing a fabulous job as I mentioned to them earlier about everything under the sun that we need to be atten attentive to um, is we have an app for our school division, which um, I cannot say enough, we have an app. So if you don't have it, it is the best way to look at news and information on your phone. Otherwise, you're gonna do a lot of this, and then this, and it's just easier to hit the app. So if you don't know about the app, please go download it. Um, and then my only other comment is, I'm. <clears throat> pledged this year that one of the things that um, myself and Lily mentioned earlier is preschool, because um, I believe if we keep saying it, that maybe the state will also hear it too, mm -hmm. <laughs> we can get some more money. Um, and it's also near and dear to me because I have a preschooler, and I could identify with Ms. Ralston saying preschool, sending your child to preschool is tantamount to sending your child to college. Mm -hmm. So it is a very expensive proposition, and we have a numerous families that um, would love to have another option available, and I know if our school division has worked 
so hard to uh, make what we have work and we continue to do so and I know that we will continue to do so so I'm just going to keep saying it so our other elected officials can keep hearing preschool because it is the foundation of our student learning and it is so important um, one of the things that I think a lot of parents may not know is that preschool in kindergarten is not the same if you were there it's not like it was when you were there um, it is very very important that students come into kindergarten knowing how to stand in line what their um, official government name is um, which you know even in my house we use nicknames for little guys um, but those are important things and they do interfere with the learning process that goes on in a kindergarten classroom I did not realize that until a few years ago when my son was in kindergarten and got all frustrated the third week of school and I was like it's kindergarten what's the big deal and then that's when I learned so I would just like to throw that out there for any parents who have little ones please um, investigate kindergarten and preschool and if there's an idea floating out in the general population of how we could do better please let us know otherwise I hope we have a successful year and to all of our students do yourself your teachers and your parents or guardians a favor keep an agenda it is a great thing. All of our students get one. If you don't, please get one. It'll keep you on time. Your parents will fuss at you less, and you can do your assignments, and they may let you do some extra special fun things. So it's just my tip of the year to get started. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wilk. Thank you, uh, Ms. Jesse. I want a couple things expanding on partnerships. It was brought up today. I recognize, you know, when schools are doing cool things with partnerships, I do want to recognize uh, the partnership between Prince William County Schools and the I Can Shine, the POAC board, uh, Yukiko Dove and parent Jennifer Andrew together. Uh, they're bringing the I Can Bike program to Ashland Elementary. This is a five-day bike camp program with students with disabilities ages eight and up. It will start in the spring of 2018. Uh, the funding actually came from the Gainesville area of 100 Women Who Care. Um, so that's very exciting and a great program, once again, doing innovative things at Ashland Elementary. Um, I attended my two high school back-to-school night programs. Uh, they were the same night, so ran back and forth uh, between Potomac and uh, Forest Park. Good times, uh, well-attended events, very happy to be there. Um, a couple other things. So I took a day off of work yesterday and visited six of my buildings. Uh, so I call it kind of my way of going back to school. Uh, started at uh, 7.30 a.m. in Miss Garrity's AP class at Forest Park. Uh, spent some time there uh, getting things started there. Moved to Principal Ramadan at Graham Park uh, where I had the chance to speak to sixth graders at a sixth grade assembly. Uh, moved from there to Dumfries Elementary uh, with Principal Coleman. Uh, should mention that Dumfries Elementary, because of our class size reduction, now has all kids inside, uh, general ed kids inside uh, the classes. Um, and so great uh, advancements going on there. From Dumfries to Swans Creek, uh, where I, I uh, joined Principal Amanda Broy, who's doing a great job. She was the AP um, elementary principal of the the Commonwealth, I think, last year. So she's the principal now. You were at that ceremony, Miss Jesse, while I was traveling. So she's doing a great job uh, taking over for, for a longtime educator uh, and principal, Barry, Barry Rosenberg. So great stuff going on there. Uh, we hear a lot about early childhood education. Uh, I went to Patty Elementary and across the street to Washington Reed. Um, for those of you who don't know, and I keep on hammering home again, that next year has the potential to open 10 classrooms for pre-K. I just asked the board that we continue to keep focus on uh, having funding uh, and support for those programs and schools. Uh, rather than some distractions, I think that could potentially cost us in the general budget and uh, potentially curtail opening that building next year for pre-K. Um, and then finally, uh, ended up at Henderson Elementary I had promised uh, the principal a year ago when we were doing board matters, um, and I did my first video at Patty Elementary, uh, that I would come back and do my next board brief at Henderson. Uh, Henderson has a great new addition. Uh, thank you, uh, the, the team and everything there. It's a beautiful wing. Uh, it has a state-of-the-art STEM lab, uh, some great programs there. Uh, so I filmed my video there. Lastly, as a parent, I did uh, take my son to his first day of kindergarten. Um, yeah, exciting, at uh, Ashland Elementary. So uh, Dominic's now in school, and now just to get rid of the other one. But 
<laughs> but I, I do want to thank you for this. Uh, speaking of my other one, I'll read it with uh, Jackson, ironic nowadays. Jackson and I will be reading this um, at night. Um, and this is really cool, especially because he's learning colors now, because I keep on pointing the red. I'm like, what's daddy's favorite color? And he keeps on saying pink. Nothing to be ashamed about that. But I keep on saying daddy's favorite color is red. So um, anyways, everyone have a good night. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Doft. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, so this summer has uh, flown by, and I think it's been a, a long summer with both tears and joy for the school division. And I uh, just want to touch on some of the highlights. Uh, I think a number of us got to go to Richmond and uh, had good times together, uh, making memories and learning from a lot of people around the state um, about different practices. And I think that was a very uh, productive time. And as uh, Superintendent Waltz mentioned, we were able to uh, receive some pretty impressive uh, awards on behalf of students in different schools. Uh, we have uh, Keith Emon has been uh, promoted to deputy superintendent, and uh, a new face in the room, Denise Hebner, is uh, now one of our new associate superintendents, and uh, hopefully we'll have a new associate superintendent replacing Keith at some point soon as well. And so there's a lot of uh, new faces uh, here, and that's, that's exciting. Um, not to steal any wind from my partner to the left, um, but one of the highlights of the summer was the school opening we had, and I think a lot of us uh, enjoyed uh, what was a uh, celebratory time as a lot of us uh, came together. Um, Justin gave a great speech, and uh, we heard a lot of fun memories uh, from... Was it? Oh, oh come to Harper, oh, okay. your Sorry. school opened. <laughs> It's been a blur. Sorry. I was like, anyway, where were we? Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we got to hear all kinds of great memories and uh, had a lot of people in the community together, and it was exciting to see that building open. Uh, and I also wanted to uh, mentioning our associate superintendents with school opening. Just wanted to say thank you to all the work they've done to help uh, students get transitioned into new schools um, and just help with making things work out. I know I've uh, called as I've had different constituents ask about different items with starting off the school year and so a large thank you to everyone for their work uh, on that front as well. Uh, and then uh, a couple of things moving forward. Uh, one highlight last Friday, uh, Colgan had their first uh, football game of the season and it was uh, reportedly an exciting time. I was actually on a Labor Day trip so I wasn't able to make it but I'll be at one of their games coming up pretty soon. Uh, We've had our back to school nights and I was at Colgan uh, just yesterday, I believe. Mm -hmm. Time flies, wow. Uh, got to run into Dr. Waltz there, saw a number of other people and look forward to being at a number of other ones. And then one other final announcement on September 16th uh, at the Marine Corps base in Quantico in the morning, uh, Rob Whitman's office uh, is doing a service academy day uh, for students, parents to learn about applying to those. And we've had students from our county uh, make some of the uh, service schools and it's a great opportunity and worth checking out. Is everyone? Uh, hi. Um, Mr. Bonfadini, I, I just want to thank you for the book and I think I'm correct. I hope that I'm correct. Did you always have the Christmas display in front of your home? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I brought my girls to see that every single year. I appreciate that, and it's really good to see you. Uh, we worked together in Barracks 3, which I said the termites were in a circle <laughs> holding hands. And they let go, and the entire floor <laughs> caved in. And I worked with you and the late Dr. Russell Cooley in that building. And it's great to see you back. You look great for 78. Well, my wife feeds me well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really great to see you. I, I want to start by saying thank you to the uh, central office staff. The EEE event, uh, the Triple E event was, was great. Um, I really enjoyed, uh, was it Pedro Nagara? Naguera uh, really had some great things to say, and I went to the Connect conference, and I want to share a comment. 
a teacher made as she came down the aisle, and she said, this is the greatest new teacher orientation I've ever attended. And I thought, wonder that's wonderful. And then I started to think, I wonder how many she's been to. <laughs> you know, maybe this is too many for her, but I think she was being very sincere, and I thought it was really a great event. Uh, this summer, I had an opportunity to go to the aviation maintenance um, company, I think it's in, in Manassas, and they do aviation maintenance. Um, Miss Marie Dobson, who worked with me on the um, legacy project with Miss Fanny Fitzgerald, invited me, and also, uh, of course, Mr. Wright was there, and they have something called a jet camp, where they teach kids how to maintain uh, aircrafts. It's a major program, and they're re very interested in working with us. So I'm very um, excited about that particular project. I also visited Fred Lynn, and they seem to be on fire over there. Uh, I want to thank, personally thank Mr. William Reed, who was uh, employed here, who is now working with Lowe's, who offered a grant for a middle school. Well, he didn't say a middle school, but he, he asked about a school. and. You know, I have the Lake Ridge schools, but Fred Lynn, because it's new, and uh, uh, Lori Williams and I are really usually just buddies in crime, uh, really. And so uh, the project went, went to Fred Lynn, and it looks great. The walls look great. Of course, you know, Mr. Brewer has everybody moving down there. Also wanted to um, I visited several elementary schools. And, but before that, I think I have a slide that you're going to put up for me. Okay. I was at Woodbridge, Woodbridge High School, and that school is doing wonderful things. And her mission statement, I thought, says it all because it's who we are. It talks about building bridges, closing gaps, and leaving legacies. And this design was done by students, and this mission statement is in all the in the bathrooms in the hallways all the all the hallway uh, bulletin boards have been done every time I go to that school there are two things that happen first Mr. Walker who is the ultimate professional meets me at the car whether I want to or not and he uh, she sends a student uh, and there's always a student, so this year I was able to meet the, the president of the class, and the senior class came back this summer, redid all the girls, all the bathrooms in the building, and they're beautifully done, of course, with the uh, mission statement. As I went to the um, elementary schools, the one thing I saw in common in my school was this flexible seating. And I know the associate superintendents are very aware of that. It was just very interesting. I went in a kindergarten class, I think it was at, it may have been at Westridge, I'm not sure. But the seats are on the floor, the tables are on the floor where kids can sit. Uh, they've got all these uh, tall tables where kids can stand. Uh, when I went to um, Springwoods, they were having outside uh, PE, a break during the day where they were out really moving about, and they, they do that, I'm told, two times a day. There was a great deal of student involvement. Um, at um, the other thing I wanted to talk about that I noticed, I went to, I want, have one more elementary school to go to, and I want to visit my middle schools, but um, I, I was just impressed with um, David Klein. I got to give him another compliment. Uh, oh, jeez, looks like two or three in one night. I don't know. Uh, the facilities have done a phenomenal job because uh, there were things taking place that I really did not know about. I went to Old Bridge. There are going to be some expansion uh, kinds of things done there. Uh, many of the schools have various things going on. Uh, West Ridge has a new uh, data lab. There's going to be there's a conference room at Springwoods. Um, and Tatum is looking forward to his new addition. And Aquaquan, I don't know if this guy is, uh, I think he's a little bit of uh, Mr. Brewer, uh, but with a different touch. But they're both very similar, and I think things are going well there. And I was pleased to meet our associate superintendent, 
Miss um, Jarslyn Hart happened to be there, said so she just stopped by for lunch. You know, just everybody's dropping in. I'm not good about going. I, as a principal, I was not big about nothing personal, but the first week of school is just crazy. And so I always make it a policy to never go the first week of school. I also met our new um, food service uh, director, and I, I didn't have his name, but he is also visiting schools. But I just thank all of you for all that you do. And um, I want to thank the audience tonight. Um, we had some uh, uptime kind of at the beginning of this meeting, but we had a lot of things going on, a couple of things that we had not anticipated. And I want to thank Mr. Jenkins, who is new, working with, uh, I, I'm new to tonight was an emergency, and I just want to thank him, and I want to give him a round of applause for coming up and helping us. And I am truly looking forward to working with you. So that's that. And I think with this, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>